everyone, my name is Jeff from Small Bit Call, and today's video is about me, one of many third culture kids, citizens of everywhere and nowhere at the same time. I don't belong to a place, but I belong to a group of people. If your parents are transferred to a different city, state, or country to work with a different language, religion, or culture, then chances are you're going to fall under a third culture kid. But before we analyze this topic clearly, what is a third culture kid? As advances in technology and transportation make global connection easier, more cultures are intersecting than ever before. Children are moved in and out of foreign countries as their parents are transferred around the world. They are born into one culture and raised among others. Today, the most common definition for a third culture kid refers to a child who has spent their formative years in a foreign country outside their parents' culture. People who fit into that bill have a tendency to mix and merge their birth culture with their adopted culture to create a new culture a third culture. There are many different kinds of nicknames for third culture kids. Some of these include biz kids, whose parents worked with international businesses, military kids, whose parents served in the military, missionary kids, whose parents are missionaries, and diplomatic kids, whose parents are diplomats and worked for foreign services. There are also many other nicknames for third culture kids, including global nomads. Third culture kids are extremely diverse. They hold distinct relationships with different cultures and are able to experience the opportunity of being able to travel at a young age. However, one simple question third culture kids like me often have difficulty answering is, where are you from? You may be asking why that's a difficult question to answer. With multiple variables, including where they were born, their parents' origin, where their relatives lived, where they used to live, or their current location, asking that question can really confuse the person you're asking. Now, let's talk about the pros and the cons of being a third culture kid. Experience. Third culture kids can understand that there is more than one way to look at a situation that they experience. That's an example of a pro. Personal identity. Sometimes third culture kids can struggle comprehending who they really are. That's an example of a con. Language. Third culture kids are often able to speak or understand more than one language. That's a pro. Humor. Humor is commonly cited to be the hardest thing to master in a new country. That's a con. Adaptability. Third culture kids have a better capacity to function effectively across national, ethnic, and organizational cultures. That's a pro. Emotional intelligence. Third culture kids are able to monitor their emotions, feel sensitive to other people's emotions, and handle their emotions better than friends. That's a pro. Relationships. Third culture kids can find it challenging to deal with those who have a limited worldview. Those are people who can't see both sides of the story. Third culture kids can be considered more globalized. That's a pro. I mean a con. I mean a pro, I mean a con. <laughs> so am I rootless or am I free? Third culture kids like me make it up as we go along. When your mom and dad are from one country, but you were born and living in another, then your identity becomes a matter of choice. Sometimes I feel more connected to the country I'm living in than to my original roots. Now, back to the question. Where am I really from? That question can cause and stir a panic inside third culture kids like me because some of us would think, oh, maybe that's where my parents are from. And others can think, no, that's where I live right now. And, uh, and other people can think, oh no, that's where I used to live. It can be confusing 
and it can also break down a person from the inside out. Depending on the person and the situation, I'll have different answers. I'll sprinkle in white lies and change the story as I go, like most other third culture kids do. Sometimes I'll go for the quick answer, and other times I'll tell them the whole story. Each time I get that question, I feel the need to have to explain myself and prove my origins. And because of that, I'll often find myself cutting down my story and making it more understandable to others. Living like this can really be confusing. I always feel like different people at once. I can change myself and rebuild myself in any possible way, but that presents a problem. Who really am I? Which one of these different people is the real me? And where do I belong? So where is home? Identity is attached to a sense of belonging, usually through family ties or deep emotional connections. Home is a place where you can be yourself and feel comfy, but for third culture kids, they can't really know where home really is. We're never 100% sure if it's here, in another country, or anywhere. Sometimes I wonder what it would be like if I had grown up in one country entirely to have a house where there would be ruler markers showing my growth spurts, to know the same friends over and over again for so many years, and to not feel like an outsider, different from everyone else in so many ways. One big issue is that transition always involves loss. No matter how good the next thing might be, loss can only follow you wherever you are. Loss can include not being able to see pets, friends, family, toys, familiar walls, and having to experience something entirely new against your own will. It can be really hard and challenging. Let's talk about some positives. Being rootless has given me a sense of freedom. I'm happy that I can be so many people at once. It feels nice to be so different but so similar at the same time. I just feel blessed to have experienced so many different cultures. I feel grateful for the experiences that I have had. And above all, I feel proud to feel like a citizen of the world. The possibilities of the future are endless. The sense of being home anywhere but being home nowhere is an important part of who I am. I love being able to choose whoever I want to be and wherever I want to go. My many masks are a storyboard of who I am. I've gradually built an identity for myself. It's a collection of pieces. Each of these pieces are handpicked by me to make the perfect whole. And that perfect whole is the real me. I've realized that the pieces that make me up aren't mutually exclusive, but they're dependent on one another. Being rootless doesn't mean I belong nowhere. It means I belong everywhere. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications bell. Also share this video so other people can see it. I'm Jeff from Small Big Calls, signing out. See you guys next time. Bye!